The future of blockchain technology, trends and predictions. So, good afternoon with a big vibe. Welcome to Malta and to Sigma and to A. IBC to Dubai. So we have the high caliber, the superstar, the people who build the blockchain and UAE and crypto. They are one of the best influencers and not only that, they are the management and head of building the industry in UAE and I say welcome to all of them. I'm small drop near them, we learn from them. We have with us George Sebastiao, co-founder for ACOS. We have Da Vinci, the superstar, and I inspire from him a lot. He is having his own brand, and you can Google him. He's one of the education maker. And we have Yalla. <laughs> He's a global. He's also having two brands, and Derek is always here with us, and he's always with all the women's also, he's educating them. I'm the first one, he support me. Yalla Limited, he's the a founder. And we have mentoring, educating. He is, uh, you find him everywhere, and he's one of the pillows also of the industry. Gordon, the founder of Crypto Partners. And you see him moderating all the panel. He been inspiring me, that's why today I decide to moderate this beautiful panel with high caliber. I'm gonna stand and say, thank you for accepting my invitation. I'm so proud of all of you. So the future of the industry, the future of blockchain. Lately we see that the blockchain is getting more and more in all the countries, bigger and bigger and making the impact. So what is the future? What, how you see it? What is the hidden agenda of that? And what you think it will be in five years later? Can one of you take the lead because you're all leaders? Thank okay, you. I, I could start off, but first off, whenever somebody says blockchain, I, I like to think about how blockchains existed before Bitcoin. It's just a means of storing data where you collect it in the data in a block and you come up with a mathematical algorithmic number for that block, and then you link it to the next one that, of data that you're going through. And so that you ensure that the past data doesn't change, assuming you didn't rewrite the whole chain of blocks. The problem is, right, it's easy for a computer to check to see if all chains are correct, all the data is correct, and if there is no kind of proof of work where you delay the time in order for it to, to actually store the block, then it can rewrite the whole block and make any changes it wants. So when someone says blockchain uh, uh, for technology, I think they're just failing to understand that it's not useful, it's not an efficient system unless you add the proof of work and you use it for money. Why do you need to use it for money? Well, because money uh, is corrupted by men every single time. Men, when we try to come up with a system of money, the men corrupt it, right? Not you ladies, <laughs> but the men. So, for example, we, uh, we, we start off with gold money and we just debase that. Uh, we do paper money, we promise that, hey, the paper is back with that money and we uh, take the, paper, the, go the gold away from the backing. So with blockchain technology combined with proof of work, it provides us with a, 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 a perfect system of money because no individual man can change it. And so when you say blockchain, you have to say, you're just saying a database if you ask me. And so you have to add in proof of work and call it Bitcoin. Basically, so bit, what's the future of Bitcoin? Well, Thank it's you. going to be money. Thank you, Da Vinci. I told you he's the education maker. Yes. So, what's George? We step we step to another question. What's yeah. the key project you want well, to add? Yes, I do believe that yeah, the future please, of, please. of of blockchain is actually very good. But like every new technology, there is an issue of uh, maturity and evolution. Blockchain has been with us for let's say 14, 15 years. 
We have multiple generations of blockchain, 1.0, 2.0. Now we're up to maybe 4 or 5.0. I do believe blockchain solves some problem, but it creates others. Solves, for example, the problem of double spend, solves the problem of decentralization, authentication, etc. But it did create other problems, problems of, for example, of performance and so on. So for me, blockchain is first Bitcoin, but it's much more than that. For example, for me, enterprise blockchain, which is the use cases of blockchain, is just getting started. One example, the largest telecom organization in the world, by implementing blockchain in their invoicing and supply management system, which runs over 50 mobile operations around the world, is going to save $450 million per year. So the, the use cases of blockchain are the valuable ones that you're going to implement. The second part that I think is very important in blockchain is not just blockchain by itself, is how you use blockchain with other technologies. Today you can use blockchain with AI. You're going to say, why we need blockchain with AI? Well, in AI you have things like train models. Is this the good model or the bad model? So um, blockchain can be used to identify and trust the AI model that you will use. You can use blockchain and IoT, which is powering today our smart cities. So I believe the future is bright. We're still in the early baby steps of blockchain. And the people that create the best and most user-friendly interfaces to blockchain are the ones that are going to succeed. I believe the most successful blockchain implementations for a user is where they don't know blockchain is being used. Derek. So it's under the cover, it's hidden, and it actually works. Thank you, George. Derek. Thanks. I agree with George. Uh, I remember the internet time. Remember internet was, uh, you had freedom of press, you had freedom, you could get all freedom of information. We all know now it's different, right? And we don't talk about anymore how the internet works. And as George said really well, is that um, you have the, had the intranet and the extranet, and now you only have the internet, right? So it depends on how you look at blockchain. I believe in five years, uh, nobody will talk about blockchain anymore. It will be just there. Uh, that is, for me, something really important. Uh, if you use blockchain now, just one thing. I know we, we know you can use it for traceability, privacy, decentralization, uh, using semi-decentralized blockchains also. Yes, there is a lot of uh, usage for it. But the only message is here that you have to use it for good and uh, also for usefulness, utility, because there are many projects who use blockchain just to put the name blockchain on their project. Thank you so much. So, Gordon, as you are in the specific uh, sector, which is crypto law, so can you tell us more on that and how you see the future of blockchain? It's going to be exciting. I, I, I want to alert the audience or sensitize the audience to an idea, which is no phenomena happens by itself. Every event, every advancement, every technology interacts with other technologies. And you get these interesting combinatorial effects. So the topic that's very hot today, of course, is artificial intelligence and chat GPT. It's a recurring theme. And I've used it myself, and it's fascinating. And no doubt there'll be an interaction between that and blockchain. But I want to remind people uh, that quantum mechanics and quantum computing is a live and active topic. And it is advancing maybe not as fast in the public's eye as artificial intelligence, but it has equal, if not greater, implications. And Every single blockchain on the planet right now, as far as I know, but I think every single one, is not quantum resistant. In other words, all the private keys and all the wallets and all the transaction hashes can be reverse engineered in a trivial amount of time by a fully capable multi-bit, multi-qubit quantum computer. So we're heading into a situation where at any moment a breakthrough can occur, and existing blockchains will not, will, some of them won't get compromised completely, but there'll be elements of compromise. So I'd, I'd say some of them are more, have elements that are resistant, but they're not completely resistant. 
I think we need to remind ourselves that things can change in an instant. I don't know, raise your hand if you, you, if you have used ChatGPT. Okay, I, I, I suggest everyone in the audience take the time and log in and use it. It is shockingly articulate. And once you get through its mandatory disclaimers and its woke political correctness and ask it some incisive questions, it's good. And someone reminded me that the chat GPT we're using is sort of the skim milk version of AI. It's a version that they deigned to repeat, release to the public. The actual technology is far ahead. So as a lawyer and as a human and as a practitioner in this space, I'm actively watching how these technologies collide and feed into each other and the combinatorial effects of that. And I give it to the rest of the panel, but it's a fascinating time. Thank you. He's asking you? You are asking him? I'll throw it to the audience, or I'll throw it to the panel. How do you see not just the evolution technology of blockchain, but the intersection of blockchain with other advancing technologies? Such as um, like the quantum computer. Well, you mentioned that, and quantum computers, yes, computers will eventually break the encryption of Bitcoin. But Satoshi knew that, and he designed Bitcoin in such a way that if the encryption breaks, you're not losing your Bitcoin by design. Now, there are certain caveats to that. Um, the way you're supposed to use Bitcoin is that you're, when you spend all your money, you spend it and you spend it to another wallet. And, and that secondary wallet, no one has access to the public key. The one that you spent it from, you had to broadcast the public key to the network. And so what happens in encryption breaking is they take the public key and reverse it and get your private key. That's a broken encryption. And that will eventually occur. Now, Satoshi put it in place that if you move your crypto into a new um, address, that address is not, does not provide the public key, doesn't have the public key. It's a hash of the public key. And what is a hash? A hash is, is a lossful compression that doesn't have enough information to re reproduce the original data. So effectively, there's no way to go back and get the public key from your address. You could only take the public key and prove the address is yours, and that's it. And so this is why um, when you, you're going to hear in the future, oh my god, Bitcoin's encryption is broken. It's dropped like a rock. You better be buying <laughs> because Thank that's you, the time Larry. to buy. Is that how I sound to you? That's terrible. So. The next question, as we see that the crypto now is leading everything, leading even, we have um, a blockchain and crypto in, in UAE, especially now we're shopping with the crypto in Dubai Mall. So what is the top trend, George, Sebastian, what the top trend blockchain and what is the key project you can advise us in blockchain as you are one of the pioneers of blockchain? So all technologies go, it's a bit like the fashion business. You know, every year there is a new topic that is hot. If we go back, let's say, one year ago, it would have been NFTs. A year before, DAOs. This year, the topic seems to be artificial intelligence. So if blockchain is to stay relevant, it has to coexist and cooperate with artificial intelligence. And I'll tell you why. If you search on Google and you type blockchain, it's been around with us for 14 years, you probably find about 4 billion entries. A chat GPT has been with us for two or three months and you find 9 billion entries. So that means the attention today is on artificial intelligence. And why? Because it has a very simple to use interface. Try to connect MetaMask in your browser, in your mobile to create your NFT. It's messy. The guy in the back of the room which is filming us, it'll probably take him a week to figure out how to do this. So ChatGPT has become available to everybody. I discovered it because one of my kids that's studying in Amsterdam, she calls me, hey dad, I need help. I said, yes, uh, I need the, you to pay me for a service. It's called Turn It In. 
And this service checks whether their plagiarism in my report. I said, why you need that? You write that report. Well, I go to chat GPT, ask a few questions, and 80% of my work is done. So now the new kids in university need another service, which is turn it in to verify that there's no plagiarism in their, in their uh, existing reports. So the usage and the combination of multiple technologies like IoT and smart cities, AI, and usability of blockchain will make the next big evolution in blockchain. So, Derek, as Yalla Limited is involved in many financial uh, cases, how do you see blockchain will impact the, the financial cases and industry? And I see that you are always flying and also sponsoring many um, events. So, how it would be that balancing things? Thank you. Yeah, I can give you a good example, right? You could use DeFi, verification, traceability, and uh, for example, for charity or for donations, right? I'm involved in one project um, which um, is like uh, re reinstating certain temples in a certain country and also reinstating their heritage and preserving their heritage and preserving the culture. You could use DeFi also for the donation so that the donations are managed well and that the donations go to the right cause. Because, for example, if I, if I go to a temple, uh, first of all, if I'm a kid, I don't want to go to the temple with grandma. But if I know they use blockchain and it's honest, and on top of it, uh, it is interesting, through metaverse or augmented reality or AI, then I go with grandma to the temple. And secondly, if I donate to the temple, for example, then I want to know where the money goes. So then we can use blockchain to see where the money goes. Then on top of that, I want to know that also the money goes through the right hands. So that is another uh, thing where blockchain or AI or uh, any other metaverse or technology can be used or an NFT. And then as last, for example, what is also very important, if you take, for example, the monks in Thailand are not allowed to touch money at all. So then again, you can use DeFi or you can use uh, digitalization of money or any kinds of digital currencies or rewards for the temples because they are not touching money. So this is just one of the thousand examples which you can use. But the most important is to do something good with it, like, for example, heritage uh, and, for example, culture and, for example, perseverance. And, for example, as Laila does a lot for women empowerment. Well, as all of you, you are the leader of the industry and we've seen in UAE growing and growing. How do you think the legislations of the, the blockchain and crypto here and also the government is focusing in empowering women and the youth on that industry in your vision? How it will be the blockchain in next five, ten years? I... Let me throw this idea out there, because it relates to regulation, it relates to the blockchain, and it relates to DeFi. The, my, my personal passion is the melding or synergizing of technology, specifically blockchain and law. Right now, there's a very uncomfortable relationship between the two. You have the idea that from Vitalik that code is law. In other words, if a contract on the chain is written a certain way and it programmatically executes a certain way, that is the proper result. It doesn't matter what the authors intended. The, the way they wrote it is w the way it, it is. That's a great theory, but once you get lawyers and judges and governments involved, they can look at the automatic code execution and say, sorry, but that breaks the law or it's breaking equity. We're, we're going to go interfere with that result. What I'd like to see in five or 10 years, and I think it's possible, is more reliable smart contracts either because the technology evolves or we have certain programmatic primitives that everyone accepts or we can approach it in a certain modular and reliable way so that the code we write is what is intended and the participants who interact with that code know that and therefore the idea of traditional courts goes out the window because the way the code is written, the way the code executes is deemed to actually be the law and the intended results and beyond further question. I think once we get to that phase, we're going to see what I want to see, which is the revolution in legal and commercial affairs. To get to your question about the participation of 
traditionally sort of excluded groups or self-excluding groups, depending on how you look at it. I, the, the thing I love about technology, the thing I love about coding is you, you don't need a face and a name to go with your contribution. There's plenty of anonymous accounts on GitHub and elsewhere, plenty of avatars. Your identity is what you say and what you do, not so much who you are. So this space, this metaverse space, allows us to step beyond sort of ethnic and gender identity. So as the time taken from us, we give the last round them. George Sebastião, please, can you add? No, Thank yeah, you. I would like to make just one other comment also with Gordon. Uh, it's very important that sometimes we have misnomers in the technology field. For example, we call something smart contracts. Smart contracts are not smart and they're definitely not contracts. But yes, but it allows us to create automation in rules that otherwise would take a lot of time and run them on the blockchain. It allows us to create DAOs and other sophisticated things. But what makes technology good is it continues to evolve. Even Bitcoin, which we think is kind of static, it is not. It is evolving. We have Traproot and other APIs that allows us to do something that goes beyond Bitcoin. So I invite you to go look at it. Uh, this year, there's something called ordinals. How many people here have heard about ordinals? Yeah. Ordinals is NFTs using Bitcoin. So they have permanency in the Bitcoin network. So the decentralization and the power of the proof of work that comes with Bitcoin, if you have other use cases for it, it will drive more adoption of that network and that solution. So stay tuned and read always up to date the latest um, news and advances in usage of technology. Thank you, George. Do you want to add something? Yes, um, blockchain is useless uh, statement uh, without proof of work because uh, if you could create blockchains without proof of work, but then someone could point a gun and say, I want these, this data changed and they can get it changed really fast. So what's the point? You might as well just use the database if you ask me. Um, so if corporations are talking about using blockchain, they're wasting their time. Um, they should just use a database instead uh, unless they add in proof of work um, into their process and ensuring that the proof of work has enough, um, uh, what's it called, uh, hashing power in order to make it work uh, so that no one could actually break and change the past. Thank Without you. that, it's just a database. <laughs> Thank you. Derek. Yeah, for me, and it's, uh, again, that I just use it for good and also uh, work with the right uh, uh, regulatory and work with the right places. Like, for example, I've been always really welcomed in Dubai and in, for example, other countries like Thailand. And if you're in those places and then work with the right people, you see that everything is coming up and that it all goes by itself. And you can see that, that the, the blockchain here is really hot, the AI is really hot, the tech is really hot. I'm super interested in digital twinning and the use of blockchain in that and, and metaverse, of course. So, for example, here, real, a hot topic is real estate. So, with blockchain and with uh, digital twinning. So be in the right place, right time, do good. Thank you so much. I was so happy and glad and honored to be with the high caliber of UAE and the globe. The blockchain industry maker, we educate from them. I just want to add as a woman, we want to be involved more and more as a woman and youth in the blockchain industry. Thank you to Sigma Group. Thank you to AIBC Summit. And again, we want to see you in UAE and other places in the globe like you are international. And today, I want to speak with you one currency, the humanity currency. No matter it is the technology, we as human beings we created, it has to serve us, not to destroy us. And I think the future of the blockchain is huge and big and it's making easy our life. Be involved and know about it more. Thank you again Thank and God you. bless you. Thank you. Thank you so much.